Previously on The Final Pitch. Investors, if you're ready, The Final Pitch begins now. What we aim is to have a Piesa power up where we can put the whole automotive world in a power of just one tap. Your value proposition, to put it very kindly, is a bit confused. It's really unclear to me who your customer is. We have 76 store footprint all over the Philippines. Yeah, you can be a supplier if you want. Amazing. This week, tech entrepreneur Francis Plaza shares his journey towards building the fast-growing e-wallet payments gateway, PayMongo. And day one of the pitches continues. My name is John Aguilar, and I'm a serial entrepreneur based in Manila, Philippines. I've gathered a formidable cast of business and industry leaders on the lookout to fund and support the country's rising tech startups. Wei Zhou, CEO of Coins.ph. Francis Plaza, co-founder and CEO of PayMongo. Avin Om, founder and CEO of Fredly Group of Companies. Amor McClung, co-founder of Geyser McClung. Rose Ong, senior executive vice president and COO of Wilcom Depot. And John Yanuschak, President and CEO of UBX. Many will try, but only a few will make it to the final pitch. Francis Plaza is a man who always dreams big and made sure he backed his dreams up. Despite coming from a family with humble means, Francis's talents and perseverance propelled him into the halls of one of the U.S.'s most prestigious schools, MIT. And from there, this amazing young star continues to shine brighter as he helps lead the charge for the country's digital transformation. I grew up an only child with parents who never graduated from college. So I must say we were from a middle class or lower middle class background in a small town in southern Leyte. When I was growing up, my mom was managing a small canteen in our local elementary school. And my father was actually a security guard then. Uh, but my parents, because they never stepped foot in a college graduation, really tried to make sure that I was focused in my schooling. I would credit them for how I turned out to be really focused academically when I was young. So I went to just a local school in our town, and luckily I went to Science High School. That sort of inspired me to pursue science and engineering, and I was this yeah, kid really wanting to explore and, and do more. Francis and I are best friends back in high school. I learned how to speak Bisaya because of him. Francis is like the computer science whiz kid of our class. So he likes to make things happen, especially if they are challenging. So he automated our school elections way before our national elections became automated. Francis is always the prime example of a humbly ambitious person. He dreams big, but you can reach out to him about your problems, if you're stuck on a problem. He will just help you, guide you. In senior year, I uh, told myself that you know, everybody was going to Cebu or Manila for college and I didn't want to follow the same path. So crazy enough, I basically sent applications for admissions to schools in the U.S., primarily to Ivy schools, but ended up being accepted to MIT at that time. I was lucky enough to also get a full scholarship, so I moved to the States to pursue my college in Boston. When I was in college, my dream was to graduate you know, with a degree in computer science and work with the big tech companies in, in Silicon Valley. So I focused basically you know, my four years in college just trying to get those internships so that I would be ready enough to move to California after graduation. After I graduated college, I worked as a software engineer at Oracle. And looking back, while I learned a lot as a software engineer at that time, I actually realized that I wasn't fond of working in a big corporate setting. So how I felt was that I was a small software engineer just trying to write a few lines of code in this big machine and didn't feel as much impact that I would have hoped I've had. So I ended up working in a small software company in Amsterdam a few years later after that. 
I was employee number 11 or 12, one of the first 20. And that's how I first learned a lot of the ropes of a startup. While I was writing code, I was actually working with a lot of teams, from our sales team to our marketing team to the CEO himself. When I came back to the Philippines, I actually met uh, my co-founders, we worked in different ventures before Paymongo. Many of them failed along the way, but I would credit our experience there for inspiring us that payments was among the hardest parts of a software to build and even to integrate. So because we felt the hardship of building all these software, we realized in 2019 that we could start writing code and, and I guess naive enough for us to think we could do finance, we build the payment system. And yeah, I guess that's how uh, we got started. We believe that, you know, as a partner for growth, we're like the Mongo seed, that we can help folks to start an idea and grow fast. As we always tell our merchants, we build the non-sexy financial part of the business so that they can focus on what they do best, which is building their own business so that every Filipino who has an idea can go online and know that they have all the tools at their disposal. So you can think of us as this enabler where we will focus on building those products for other businesses. And our aim is also become that enabler so that the pie, the economy, grows even much larger than what it is today. One of the amazing things that the company really is when you actually look at our demographics, it's a very young and driven company. So our median age, I think, is around 28 or 29 years old. And while I don't see you know, age as an indicator in and of itself, uh, there's actually a lot of young and driven folks in, in the company. People who maybe it's their first time being in a small company or maybe it's their first time taking a leadership role. People are just you know, really stepping up in whatever they can do or need to do so that they could help the team entirely. I've come to know Francis not only as our boss, but also our friend. Frankly, he's one of the smartest people that I've ever met. He's always willing to listen to everyone's inputs, and in general, that really makes for an outstanding boss. So I have reached levels of a personal and career growth that honestly would not have been possible without Francis. In turn, because of how I've also grown in this company, I have made sure that it is also my duty to pay it forward to my own team. So one thing that I'd say I'm most proud of, especially with what we do here in the company at PayMongo, is that we've only existed for a little over three years since 2019, and we have already served more than 10,000 merchants, and that's growing. But also for me, most importantly, is that starting as a company of just eight people, we're now over 200. And that is a testament of like how much more opportunity and also how much more challenge there are that we can actually solve. And as I always tell the team, you know, the measure of success that I have for the PayMongo story is that when in the future, many of the folks who have gone through the company will look back to their time at PayMongo and say that, those years have been the instrumental years of their life. At that time, will influence them on whatever they're doing, whatever venture they're building, whatever leadership roles. I would say how far we've come is one of the most that I'd be proud of. And you know, secondary to that would be all of the investments and all the successes that we've made because of the team that uh, we've formed today. So I decided to join the final pitch because I am excited to see many of these entrepreneurs and I'm really looking forward to hearing many crazy ideas. And I'm sure you know a couple of them will find challenges along the way, but I hope to meet also those who will find their success stories and I would love to be part of their journey early on. If entrepreneurs are coachable, it is easy for them to work with a lot of people. So you have to be an optimist, rally your team behind so that they believe in what you think your innovation should be in the market, but you also have to listen. You have to be sensitive to what you know, your partners as well as what the customers really want. So I think both factors are really important for every successful entrepreneur, among many others, of course. Up next. Hi, my name is Mikhail Macon. I'm the co-founder of Griff. 
we're asking for a hundred thousand dollar investment for me to invest i would like to understand sort of like you know your competitive advantage i feel like i would question the real market size it's kind of underwhelming to me to be quite honest with you Next on stage is a New Yorker who fell in love with a Filipina and now plans to launch his own NFT-based platform in the Philippines. Hey, Mikkel. Hey, John. How you doing? I'm good. Mikkel, I first met you at a startup event a couple of months back. You're an American. You've been here five years, married to a Filipina. Yes, yes. Beautiful and Filipina. Ma Maganda. Maganda, huh? Yes. Maganda. Yeah, I'm sure she is. You know, I just love that you came to the Philippines now You've put up your own startup. Tell us about the journey from where you were in the U.S. to now starting something here in the Philippines. Oh, wow. Um, it's been amazing. Um, I came from New York, actually, from New York City, and I was living there. I came to visit in the Philippines, and I just felt something missing when I left. And I was like, you know what? If I'm going to take any chance in my life and do something for myself, I need to do it now. So I came with the money in my pocket and I came to the Philippines. I started a couple of small businesses and I launched Griff like a year ago during the pandemic. So Mikhail, you're up next. Break a leg. Thank you so much, John. Hi, my name is Mikhail Macon. I'm the co-founder of Griff and I'm here to pitch our NFT marketplace. We plan to be the Amazon.com of NFTs. We're asking for a $100,000 investment for 15% of equity of our NFT marketplace. My grandfather is the one that brought me to the Philippines and told me about the Philippines and this great country. Unfortunately, before I got here, he passed away. He served here in World War II and fought the Japanese to help liberate this country. And in my military days, I've decided to do something better with my life. And I came here on my own will, with my own money, and my own opportunity. I started my own businesses and I have found the love and the peace that I found in this country. So what are NFTs? Well, NFTs are a token that is a real life token that can be used for value. And in this value can be trained or exchanged for different types of entities. Um, the NFT market is also used for authentication to validate real items that you can use and purchase and real ha have authenticity. And right now, the NFT market is really growing. So in 2021, the NFT market exploded to $60 billion. I'm sorry, y'all. But mm. NFTs are just really a documentation mm. that is used so mm. you can, oh my God. Okay. Um, wow. I just got here and just went blank. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, oh, man. Okay. So, very passionate about this. I know this guy. So, uh, let me just... Uh, yeah, sorry. sorry. You can do it, man. You can do it. And, and look at them. I mean, they're not uh, to eat you. They actually want to do something with you. So, that's you're actually in a good place. Okay. Look them in the eyes so that you don't, don't get nervous. Okay. All right. All right. I didn't expect I was going to do that today. <laughs> um, well, I am passionate, as John said, about this. I've been working very hard on this, and I came by myself. And I do this for my family and my wife. So I just do want to apologize for just going blank. But let's get back into this, OK? Some of the problems is just the fact that there's a big space when it comes to learning and for people to have actually have the opportunity to get NFTs and understand how the market works. A lot of people don't understand what wallet goes with what particular token and how that they can get this downloaded and use it for the particular items. So what is the solution? The solution is the NFT Griff cross-chain marketplace. Buyers and sellers will be able to come to one place and purchase all the NFTs under different blockchains in one place. Not only that, we'll give creators and artists the opportunity to have scripts so they can use their script to download, use the Griff NFT Marketplace to download their wallet and use it as a white label so they can actually purchase and sell NFTs in their own particular space. Also, besides that, we're going to have wallet integration to where we're going to create a wallet 
to where you'll be able to get all your NFTs downloaded and also have that wallet connected to MetaMask and other wallet services and providers. We feel that this will be an ease of use to bring more people to the market and give people the opportunity to get into this space. Our business model is that we're charging 2% transaction fees for all of our NFTs on our marketplace and also that we were gonna to go to underserved markets and underserved blockchains to bring them into Griff Marketplace to where they can sell their NFTs in one place. There's an estimate that $208 billion is the overall estimate of this space and that we're looking at possibly $97 million of people who are willing to come into the marketplace. And we estimate in that 5% of that market will come to Griff and estimating that our market share is gonna be 5 million US dollars. I would like to thank you judges for your time. Thank you for the final pitch for letting me come up here. Thank you so much. I'll let Wei comment first, but this is something I'm very interested in. OpenSea has been around for a long time. Yes. Because right? I think it's an extremely competitive um, marketplace right now. For me to invest, I would like to understand sort of like, you know, um, your competitive advantage Right, what would be your sort of you know, edge against um, these existing incumbents? Well, our number one competitive advantage, to be honest with you, is the fact that we're cross-chain. Our advantage is it's not only the opportunity to have all these different blockchains in one place, but we feel that that is needed in this space. It hasn't been done before, and it's 2022. Why is everything still separated? Multi-chain is the future, but there's a, there's a tremendous amount of technical challenges, I think, with regards to sort of having one wallet that can service all of that. I feel like I would question the real market size. And by the way, when you mentioned 5 million market size, that's 5 million in revenue or 5 million in yeah. asset value? 5 million in revenue by 2025. It's kind of underwhelming to me, to be quite honest with you. Would you consider looking into, say, a hyper-specialized market with higher value, higher transaction value? For example, watch collectors. You talk about what, what Filipinos are obsessed about, watch collecting, car collecting, establishing provenance. Because I, I think a lot of people in this group would pay for something like that. But I feel like you could be a good proof of concept if you start with something real, the digital twin of something real. I understand. This space is really new. We want to sell NFTs. We want you to come and buy NFTs, any type of NFT. If it's an art NFT, if it's a music NFT, if it's, if it's a statement to a home or if it's real estate or whatever, you need a space to go to to get into that. And we want to be the place that provides that for you. Okay, so I'm going to make you a different kind of offer. Use our platform. We'll provide the platform for you to do a meaningful proof of concept. I'm with Amora on this one. Focus on finding that unique in real life asset that you know carves out a position for you. You know, I loved your story actually. Your connection to the Philippines is unique and I can sense your love of this country. You know, when you take your story, you marry it with what Amor was getting at. And so my offer to you is don't spend all the time building technology. Leverage our platform for some kind of proof of concept and focus on the thing that will differentiate you. And if you accept his offer, I'll, I'll start with 50,000 US. I will lend you my network, which is worth way more than that. Um, yes, I would like to accept your offer and thank you for the opportunity, sir, for the work together and bring this concept to me. I'm really grateful and honored for this opportunity and also to have you pitch in is a blessing and an honor. Thank you so much. The pitch was great. Um, I wish I would have performed better. I am very ashamed and sad that I actually froze. But something came out of it. They recognized the love that I have for the country. And I want to thank Team Griff. I feel bad that I let you guys down today. And it's just a lesson learned. I feel better now. We won already. So I'm happy for that. Yeah, we needed a win, right? The reason why everybody wants to have their own marketplace is that there's massive amount of value to owning a marketplace, just like you do in, you know, for e-commerce. Yeah, let's give him a chance. I mean, uh, you know, let's, let's give him a chance to focus on what he needs to focus on. If he's not wrong for wanting to do a marketplace, let, you know, let him find the differentiated marketplace. You gotta have focus on something. I think that's where he wants to be. Up next, 
I'm here today looking to raise 500,000 in USD. But before you pull out your checkbooks, I want to give more context about what we do at ChatGD. I get that you're putting off the valuation, but it's very hard to negotiate. The next startup to pitch is introducing a multi-channel e-commerce platform that helps reach customers instantly across social media channels. Hi, Ragde. Hi, John. So Ragde, you were a former professor. Why did you get into this from being a professor? Is there a particular, I guess, pain point that you wanted to address that made you want to do this? There's nothing wrong teaching at a university. Actually, it changed the world uh, one student at a time. But the thing with being an entrepreneur is that you're basically creating a um, you know, wider impact with the products that you build for the world. I love how that sounds. It is very grandiose. And I think it's a vision that uh, perhaps our investors would like to latch on to. So Ragde, you are up next. Good luck. Thanks, John. Hi, investors. I'm Ragde Falsis, CEO and co-founder of ChatGenie. We enable businesses to sell inside the world's biggest apps. I'm here today looking to raise 500,000 in USD. But before you pull out your checkbooks, I want to give more context about what we do at ChatGenie. And for that, I want you to meet Kel. Like hundreds of thousands of businesses here in the Philippines, he's trying to grow his business by selling online. He already tried doing this with marketplaces. The problem is, these marketplaces are lacking in its loyal customers and limits the customer interaction. And what he did was very simple. Instead of just promoting inside the world's biggest apps, he's now using ChatGenie to accept orders from his customers all within the same app that's with no link outs and no coding required. With ChatGenie, we created a full-stack e-commerce platform for super apps, giving apps like Messenger, Instagram, Viber, Gcash, and soon, TikTok, the power of online ordering. We are working with mobile wallets and payment gateway partners for online payments. And we have also integrated third-party delivery partners for automated delivery dispatch. With ChatGenie, merchants can launch multiple sales channels inside the world's biggest apps in as fast as five minutes. And Kel is not the only one. Since the public launch of our prototype in 2020, we onboarded over 3,500 merchants and generated over 5 million in GMV. Aside from this, based on our own data, every dollar of ad spent on ChatGene sales channels is returning over 600% more value compared to e-commerce channels. One case study that we have with the biggest telecommunication company here in the Philippines, before ChatGene, the conversion rate is at 0.87% after ChatGene increased to 5%. That's actually over 500% increase in conversion rate. They're also getting additional 30,000 leads generated outside their website. Lastly, we help them increase their organic sessions by 61%. As a SaaS company, we're charging our merchants a monthly subscription fee that starts at $20 plus 20 cents per transaction. And we also have online margin from online payment and shipping integrations. Investors, ChatGenie is the first of its kind in the Philippines when it comes to offering multiple sales channels inside the super apps. The vision is to be one place where merchants list and sell their products on all platforms all over the world. Imagine further linking with the manufacturers in this side of the world to sell efficiently in their markets in the West and vice versa. And which is why we're raising 500,000 USD as part of a seed round to reach our next milestone. This is just the beginning. If you're interested in building the next generation of e-commerce channels, let's partner together and enable more businesses to sell inside the world's biggest apps. Thank you. So you make more money on the ads, not on the trade itself? Uh, we do get more money if our merchants get more sales, get more transactions inside our platform. You're asking for 500K, you've got existing investors. What's the valuation that, that uh, is for being the, raised at? Um, current seed Safe Note holders is uh, has a valuation cap of uh, five million USD. Who are who are the investors? So currently, um, the CEO of Spenmo, and then I, my former co-founder, and then there's a local another angel investor, and then um, we just got a grant from Mastercard um, worth uh, 150k. So it's very hard to negotiate on the valuation because you have existing uh, note holders. Yeah. Or on the cap, on the cap. Yeah, yeah. No, not on the actual, I, I get that you're putting off the valuation, but it's very hard to negotiate. Um, yeah, that's why it's safe note. If uh, we raise uh, a very good uh, valuation, um, if we get a good um, lead 
or the round um, if you're going to invest in the same safe note as the current um, safe note holders it's going to be a win i would actually like to give it a try like as a merchant because we operate restaurants and i feel like this is going to be useful for like restaurants chain from ordering all the way to delivery is there a way to like do a demo Maybe after? POC. <laughs> yeah. Actually, since you're nice, we can give you up to six months free Oh, trial. thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because to be honest with you, as an investor, I would love to try it like um, from a merchant point of view before deciding as to whether or not we're investing. Yeah. But to be honest with you, I'm quite interested. Yeah, you're going to love the zero commission fee. Yeah. Zero Definitely. commission. Yeah, zero Actually, commission. I'm with Wilcon and I'm also the president of the Philippine Retailers Association. I'm not really keen on investing. I want to connect you to, you know, you have currently 3,500 merchants and I can connect you to more merchants because in our portfolio, we have so many brands, you know, like, you know, retail brands. You know. We can, you know, pull all the other merchants in your, in your ecosystem. Yeah, we can definitely give you the uh, free six months trial as well. Although we have our own site, you know, uh, we, are, we are also in the marketplace. You know. I was actually looking for it in the App Store, but I can't find it. That's the good thing about the solution. You don't need to download it. You just oh, need okay. to go to the website, connect your Facebook page, and then that's it. I'm not privy, I guess, to the specifics, right? But I've heard good things about the company and you guys as, as, as the founders. No? Um, and I think there's a lot of ways that we could further collaborate together. Beyond also on the, on the PayMongo platform, uh, I think I have the network and uh, it can help you um, think like filling up the round with more investors here uh, locally as well as foreign. So I'll make an offer right now at $100,000 at $3 million if that's workable. I know it's a safe note anyway. Or maybe we can meet uh, in between. Okay. So the current is five. All right. And then you're offering three. Can we meet around $4 million valuation cap? Okay, let's okay. do it. Then I'll take it. All right. <laughs> it's good that there are two investors that have businesses that can use us. We're very grateful for the offer of Francis. So we're definitely going to work on with that. So I think this is great tech. Uh, but I feel, and it's not just this pitch, it's the other e-commerce pitches. I really feel like the missing element is the the service to actually get the people online. It's almost independent of the tech. But I love the tech. Yeah. Uh, I was a little scared of the valuation, so, you know, yeah. gl glad that you bit and not me. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> uh, I agree with you, I guess, to those points. Uh, but I guess, like, I, I was over-indexing on, like, helping them and maybe sort of, like, throughout the process, if we can coach them, yeah. um, you know, one way or another, we can yeah. help I, I, them, I, like, I, unlock some of those. And you're betting on the founders. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's a good bet. I think that's a good bet. Next time on The Final Pitch, we get to know more about Coins.ph's CEO, Wei Zhou. And day one of the pitches continues. So I'd like to introduce the co-founder of Geyser McClung, Brad Geyser. I'm Jason from Hustle PH. We help celebrities sell their free love items online. The business model, I don't, I don't like it. The evidence suggests that you do not have a scalable business here. What's the secret sauce of the technology? No. My impression is everything's manual. Yeah, n nothing. <laughs>